la 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 sí sí se puede la 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 sí sí se puede la 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 sí sí se puede la 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 sí sí se puede la 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 sí sí se puede la 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 sí sí se puede Pueblo unido jamás será vencido y la gente marcha con orgullo y pasión mucho impacto en las calles de Tucson sí sí se puede sí sí se puede sí sí se puede have a conversation and uh, and at any point you are inspired uh, in this conversation or hopefully you're inspired in this conversation we'll see as uh, 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 I, I try to do a little bit of that every week but uh, yeah sometimes it uh, hits and sometimes it doesn't sure but at any point that you want to say hey, pastor Ken be quiet I think I think I have a song you okay. can feel, feel free to do that so I, I want to first talk about First, want to talk to talk about you as an artist, and um, what does it? Where, when in your life did you come to this self understanding that that you are an artist? Well, I, I guess I, I'm just very modest, and um, I'll let me let me just begin from the beginning. I'm a first generation immigrant from Nogales, Mexico to Nogales, Arizona, 1961. Uh, my father immigrated all of us, and we all had to learn English. I repeated first grade, I was humiliated and so on. But uh, the next day I went and got books and I read and I read, and, and I just wanted to learn. And then music was introduced by my brother, and I hardly got attention, so <laughs> uh, I wanted to be noticed, and so I just got the guitar one time, just started playing, and I was, my siblings and my mom were laughing, and and then from there on, I just started writing poems, and and of course I was you know got discriminated, being the newcomer, and I just wanted everybody to get along, and so all my poems were mostly about love and peace, and and it, then it evolved that I bought my first guitar, uh, I learned how to play a right-handed guitar upside down, and then. Uh, my brother switched the strings. I had to start again, and I said, I want to be somebody. My friends in middle school thought that I was kind of uh, out of my mind that I said, I'm going to be famous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn how to play the guitar. And little by little, it developed, and John Lennon had a, an album at, uh, sometime in New York City. I don't know if you are familiar with that. Uh, it was a, an album with, um, it looked like a newspaper, Angela State, uh, Attica State, Angela Davis, and all of these. And that's, that's, that's how it evolved. And it evolved, and, and when we used to go out of town, I used to perform for the, the guys in the, in the bus. You know, I mean, I'm back of the bus, my seat was reserved, and I just, I just kept at it. Mm. Well, you, you know, the, uh, that John Lennon's album, the album cover, uh, some people would say, would look at that cover and say, I, I think really mostly white pro-establishment kind of people would say, oh look, these are the places of trouble. But I think another way of looking at it is to say, here were places of pain. Here were places of truth. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. And so when you, I hear you talk about, about growing up, that, that it was a combination of pain 
and hope that really fed you to becoming an artist. Is that? Yes. Is that, yeah. Does that resonate? Yes, is, it does. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But I always was the Cold War, you know, the 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 Ruskies, you know, in television, you know, walking, marching through Red Square, and I was just curious, why is it that these people are always, country, you know, they're always challenging the United States, and so I would read a lot about what was happening, you know, Vietnam War, um, the geography of where, you know, Angola, all of these troubled countries. Uh, John Lennon returned his. Um, uh, he, he, he was uh, got a badge or a M, MBE award from the Queen, and he returned in protest of England being in in Africa. And so a lot of that curiosity and and, um, and being a rebel within reason. Uh, being a rebel within reason. What? Well, a peace a peacemaker basically, not not destructive, ah. not destructive, or like you know that ah. one, uh, power to the people. But my impact where I'm at now is that when I found out that children and women were walking the desert, that was a rude awakening for me. And I started writing these songs and playing them in coffee shops where the coffee shop owners would tell me, go easy on the politics. I knew what my heart was telling me, but I also I was kind of scared. I was at this coffee shop and I am playing this song, uh, Water's My Religion. and. And I ended up with, with the word heat. You know, I'm gonna die from the scorching heat. All of a sudden, a border patrol comes in and everybody looks like, like what are you gonna do now? And then I said, and I think that officer's uniform is really neat. <laughs> 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 Two people walked out. They got offended. And of course, I, you know, they, they brought it to my attention. But little by little, I just stood to, stood to, the, to what I was, uh, what my path is. And I have, convince a lot of people by the music, art. In an uprising, musicians, journalists, uh, poets, we are the first to go. You know, they don't want us around. My kids worry about me. But I, I have a I have a, a mission. Yeah. I have a mission. Do you do you know any Border Patrol agents? Yes, I've done work for some of them. Yeah. And some of them Oh, I, okay, I have one, Ventana Canyon up at the resort. And I was doing, my, my profession, I'm a third generation tile setter. And I just don't do showers, but I do very intricate work. And I was doing some work in the backyard of these people. At that time, I had a little highlights and they asked me like, what was with this? And I said, well, I'm a musician. I started talking about the border, my music, and they both smirked. He gave me a card and, and he was way up there in the Border Patrol Administration. And he started telling me about these people, they come and take our jobs, da 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 da. And finally I said, you know, I wanna share something with you. And I said, do you know what NAFTA, you know, you know about NAFTA uh, a little bit. Well, what, what can you tell me? He didn't know much. And I told him, because of NAFTA, the failure of NAFTA, all of these corporations that were uh, built on, on the Mexican side drew a lot of people from the south of Mexico and Central America, that's where Nogales, the border towns, lost their community. And then I just went on a little bit more, and, and he said, you know, this is just a job to keep my roof over my head. He thought, he stereotyped me, he just thought that I was just a, another uh, worker, you know, a gardener or a, you know, he didn't, he was, he was uh, surprised that I knew this much. And then all he had to say is that when you get your CD, I'll buy it. Mm -hmm. A year later, I called him, and he said he was unemployed. <laughs> and he said, I'll leave you the money. You know, he didn't want to come from, he just followed through with his work. He left the money in the backyard next to the grill, and I left the city, whether he heard it or not. But I rattled his cage, uh, in, in, in just by, by that, if you're a border party, you should know a little bit more uh, of just, just uh, arresting people or whatever. Yeah. And, more, more of the, more of the bigger picture. I think. More of the bigger picture. So let's let's make a shameless plug right now. For fifteen dollars, you can get one of Pablo's CDs. All right, and we want you to make sure that uh, that you can do that. Now, one of the songs on the CD is pretty powerful, Joselina. Joseline. Yeah. Would you sing it for us? Sure. Okay. And I'll tell you about Joseline. Um, 
Coseline was a 14-year-old Salvadoran girl that uh, she was raising her, her little brother, nine years old, in El Salvador. Her parents were in the States saving money to get her across. Coseline only made it to Arivaca, which is 40 miles north of, of the border. She touched our hearts in the community. And this is the hardest song I can sing because I'm already getting emotional. Um, at the end, there's a lullaby that I used to sing to my girls, Huermas y Mi Niñas, and that's, that's at the end of the song. Um, and also, I've been told that Joseline is with me. When I sing, she's with me. In the tropical country of El Salvador, a journey is about to begin. Crossing three man-made borders, a world of young girls never seen before. shooting star missing your mother and kissing your baby brother goodbye Joseline you traveled so far the desert can be brutal at night and can be freezing cold. Joseline, your story will unfold. How did you spill the hunger, loneliness and wrenching pain? Praying to the heavens above you till the hope of rescue came. We will not stay quiet any longer keep your name and memory alive same for those who crossed and made it and for those who did not survive my 
little one may you sleep in peace duerma se mi niña duerma se me ya los angelitos te cuidarán José you never came out to play. Thank you. I find that when I'm writing a song and I get tears, I have Chris in that song, and I feel like that song is going to be something. I sift through it, and I, that's why I look like a raccoon, because I hardly sleep. <laughs> no. Pablo, thank you for that. Thank you. You're one of the, where I wanted to, where I want to go finally is to say, that the border, uh, this, there's this line on a map that's not really there when you go to see it. And that there seems to be this space, this geography, and the spiritual space of miles on each side where people are interacting and finding the best of themselves and maybe the worst of themselves. So like Hosseline, her body was found was found within border territory. 40 miles north, right outside of Arivaca. Yeah, so there's this, there's this in-between space, this subliminal space of the border that is more than a line on the map. And it seems to me that's where artists are the most helpful to help us understand that subliminal space that means nothing Pol that, 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 that the political meaning of it is nothing compared to the real human lives that are involved and work and live and That's die right. in that space. And you're one of those artists to help us understand that. Yes, thank you. And we call it the borderlands. And uh, I have a friend who, who makes crosses. And he, on his GPS, he finds and he goes and he plants and cements the, 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 the cross with a name, give him a proper uh, burial. There's uh, the Tucson Medical, Pima County Medical uh, uh, Office. They have a refrigerated building for people who are not identified, and they're there. They're, they're, they're not until they're being uh, identified, and when they are, it's a closure to family to know we have artists that sculptures um, just recently uh, some uh, no mas muerte uh, volunteers were, were uh, found guilty by littering at the Buenos Aires uh, and yet that is what you're up against but, 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 but they, they, they were found guilty because they were leaving water in the desert. And, and well, food right? and water. Food and water. Yes. And uh, that humanitarian act was judged as, as a crime. Crime. And eight years ago, the same thing happened just because he was putting water. So what they did, they called the news cat people later on, and they let the people, the, the people from the Buenos Aires refuge, that this is what they were going to do. Grandmothers of 80 uh, uh, kids, they went and they, they, were, they were arrested. But they were making a statement like, you're not going to stop us from doing this. So artists have, uh, have a tremendous voice and a tremendous role to play in raising our awareness and 
uh, one of such artists have uh, actually inspired you uh, to write another song. And uh, that song is uh, These Shoes. These Shoes, yes. These Shoes, uh, I got inspired from a friend who was a sculptor. And um, she had this prototype of shoe prints on this box. And she, you know, she was showing me her latest sculpture, but this was in the process. It took me three years to finally, because this CD, the first CD was five years that took me, and it was the last song I wrote, but yet it was uh, the first song I, on my song. And these shoes, if they had a voice, the stories they would tell of their travel, of their journey. And I incorporated uh, some violin to it in my recording, and it made it sound really, it reminded me of the Irish shimmy, the, the famine. And, but just because you came through Alice Island with a legal name in the eyes of the government, you were not legal in the streets. You were that funny person with that funny accent, the clothes you wore. But I have to admit a lot of this, uh, that in this country, uh, people, the newcomers, uh, are threatened the, the, the people that have been living here for a while. But little did they forget that a lot of this land also was not theirs. It, it was taken away from the Native Americans. and. And that's how everything evolves, you know. Remember that song, Everybody Wants to Rule the World? to dance and people smile its fashions brought many styles if the shoes had a voice many stories would be told they came in all different walks of life from the young, the weak, and the old. A traveling shoe, living imprints with its soul, carry a living soul. Carry a living soul. Weather. 
desert, the rugged cold terrain, mucking through the mud and extreme heat, under the pouring rain, under the pouring rain, under the pouring rain. Forget about your past loved ones Through Ellis Island with a legal name But legal in the eyes of the law You were the blame, newcomer You were the blame You were the blame They came in all different walks of life From the young, the weak, and the old A traveling shoe, living imprints with its soul Carry a living soul Carry a living soul I'm gonna let my shoes have a voice. Can you join it, please? Just tap on your feet. Thank you. On my CD, I, I have a lot of sound effects bringing the desert to your car, to your house. I have a reenactment that I witnessed when I was patrolling with the Samaritans. We were up on a ridge. We saw this helicopter hovering like a buzzard. And our leader said, you know, turn on the scanner. We heard the border patrol. Tango, we have a prize calling for backup. We sat there, we, we, and, and you, sure enough, you have these, these uh, paddy wagons that went. Um, and I carried that also the inspiration. And so what I did, I did a reenactment in the recording studio. We had some speakers outside and we walked through gravel to give you that effect of my, migrants walking. We had the birds chirping. Um, also, I, I got a hold of a helicopter and this helicopter is approaching. And then you hear the border patrol on the scanner. Um, I also got involved with a modern dance company in Tucson and I wanted to bring the awareness of the, of the, the desert. And so we had a border show called B Crossing Boundaries. We had, had five shows. They choreographed five of my muse, five songs of mine. Also, we had theatrical uh, actors that came and did their border uh, scripts. By the second show, we had uh, tissues because it was very emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I have a, my, one of my, some of my songs on a border documentary that Martin Sheen is the narrator. And I'm just sharing my credentials because this is, uh, I just don't sit put. I, I, I always look for a lot of different twists. And the best is headphones or, or in the car. Uh, there's a lot of, I've been told that my music is like a, a theater, theatrical. So it's not like just singing and I have to, you know, of course, my Latin roots, you know, bust it out and you sing and, um, yeah, so. <laughs> so I, two things. Uh, I want you to have a full voice and, uh, you know, you, you, had, you had described yourself as a, a, a peacemaker, uh, but you also said a peacemaker is like a reasonable rebel. Is that right? Is that something like that? Yeah, it's. Okay. So, but a peacemaker is different from a peacekeeper in that a peacemaker will often disturb the peace in order to create a greater peace. And you have a song that I think can do that for us, but uh, about a democracy. 
but but what I what I want to to first, and I want you to do that, and then we'll end it. We'll end this this conversation, sure. and uh, because I think that you also you you speak and you continue in this spirit of freedom, of liberty, of dignity of every human being. It is very much the same spirit of Martin Luther King, of which this is the weekend for that. And we're going to have some observance of that. So we're blending your songs and our observances together for the rest of the service. Sure. But there's a code word I think you use, or at least I get the feeling there's, it's code language. And that's the word newcomer. What is that, what's that word mean to you when you use it in your song? The newcomer is cause the problem. To me, the newcomer is the one that comes and you ruffle feathers to people that are territorial and people that are not willing to accept people for their culture because uh, just because they, you know, they, they just are, haven't been exposed to that. And it's almost when you hear somebody speak another language and, and sometimes it, it doesn't jive, it, it, it gets you defensive. Yeah. And the newcomer is, is, um, is somebody that when you get discriminated, sometimes people have to, they feel powerful because they know that you're the new person and you don't speak much of the language. Uh, and that pertains to any any place, you know. Mm -hmm. in, um, you can be in a club or in a group that a new guy's coming in, a new person come in. It's like you know, people are territorial. Nothing personal. I'm, you know, volunteers. You know, mm -hmm. even in the volunteer movement, there are uh, competitions that not competition. You feel threatened. You're a volunteer, and then a new person comes, and that person's you know starting to get a name on what they're doing, and, and it, it's it's just kind of human nature. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, but uh, I, I hope I answered yeah. your question, but, and I went through that. But there's a difference between being a newcomer, like at a church. You know, you come in, you're a newcomer at a church, yeah. and you sit down, and then someone else comes in and says, who's been here forever, says, hey, you're in my seat. <laughs> right? Kind of a like newcomer that. is, yeah. now who is, who's disturbing the peace? Who's disturbing the status quo? Well, the, the newcomer in the, the, that's accidentally sat in the pew or the person who says, hey, get out of my seat. Well, the newcomer right? is, is out, of, out of order in the eyes of that person, you yeah. know, of that person. And then that person escalates it because, you know, you're territorial or... Yeah. Yeah, so, so I mean, and that's a very, that's a very, I don't know, it's almost meaningless. It's, it's just a little exchange that happens. But we have actually built policy on our fear of a newcomer, on the fear of the other that costs people's lives. So that we've taken this sense of being territorial. We've taken this sense of drawing a border. And we're saying you cross that line. Our policy is built on the idea that you should not, cannot cross that line. Not understanding that migration is a natural human phenomenon that has happened for thousands and thousands of years and that the borders we draw are a fairly new reality. So who's the problem? The people who draw the borders are the people who cross them. And I just want to leave it at that. I, I, I can answer also, the government has to do with it. I think yeah. the government should encourage people. I mean, this is America, you come to land of the free and all this, that's it, they give you, they, they give you the, 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 the past green card, but there should be some kind of programs to educate the American people to uh, be more open. Yeah. I mean, I believe that people from the South should be a some kind of a, of, a, of a summer exchange where they bring them to the Southwest so they can interact and not stay, you know, and, you know, because this mm -hmm. country is a country, but you have five countries, you know, Northeast, the South, the, 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 the Midwest, there's a lot of different, even even with, with them, there's, there's, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. Californians, you know, with, with uh, Arizonans, about LA people. I mean, there's, it's just everywhere. Uh, well, and but, I, uh, I, I think that sense of entitlement and privilege was really exhibited in the video of the young man that got into the face of the Native American yeah. at, you know, that we've seen on Facebook. Just recently, yeah. So I think that that's a good way to introduce your last song here for, uh, about the democracy. Sure. Okay. I never, well, I, I did what I could with this song. This is during the, the invasion of the Dakota Flats. Um, and this is called Democracy or Hypocrisy. 
Could we remove some of the, the bass on my guitar, please? Spin on for the... Or is it just the monitor? I'm sorry. There we go. With our country with its short, short few To mute the immigrant, shoot the black Invade the Dakota sacred flats Democracy or hypocrisy Towers in flame, and who's to blame? An inside job, so they claim. Democracy or hypocrisy? To salute the flag before a game, players kneel in vain. America, 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 America. Thank you. Pablo, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being thank here. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for your voice. Thank you. Okay.